Let's start with i, the imaginary unit, and let's square it. What real number does i squared equal? Right, i squared is defined as being equal to negative 1. Okay, so next let's look at i cubed, or i to the third power. How can you evaluate this expression? Well, using what we know about exponents, this is the same as i squared times i to the first, right? Because when you multiply powers with the same base, you can add their exponents, and 2 plus 1 is 3. Also, we can rewrite i to the first as just i. So, what's i squared times i? Can you simplify this expression? Nicely done. So i squared is negative 1, and we're multiplying that by i. You'll commonly see this written as negative i. So that's the answer. i cubed equals negative i. Next, try evaluating i to the fourth power. You can get the answer by writing this as i cubed times i to the first, and also by writing it as i squared times i squared. Either way, you should get the same result. Excellent! Let's quickly review both ways to get the answer. You already found that i cubed is negative i, and i to the first is i. What's negative i times i? Well, we have a minus sign, and i times i is negative 1. So the answer is negative negative 1, which is positive 1. Let's double check that by evaluating i squared times i squared. i squared equals negative 1, and the same goes for this i squared. And negative 1 times negative 1 gives us the same correct answer, positive 1. Okay, so that's i squared, i cubed, and i to the fourth. Can you simplify i to the fifth? Right! i to the fifth is what you get when you multiply i to the fourth by another i, giving you 1 times i, or i. So i to the fifth is exactly the same as just having an i by itself. That's pretty interesting. Okay, what's i to the sixth? Excellent! So i to the sixth equals negative 1, just like i squared. Now, we said that i to the first equals i, and let's rearrange the other powers you evaluated here. Notice a pattern? If you were to evaluate i to the seventh, you'd find that it equals negative i, just like i to the third, and i to the eighth equals one, just like i to the fourth. Here are the next four powers, and the next four, and the next four. See the pattern now? When the exponent is a multiple of 4, you always get 1, and the pattern repeats every 4 integers, cycling between i, negative 1, negative i, and 1. Try using this pattern to determine what i to the 34th power equals. Is it i, negative 1, negative i, or positive 1? Nicely done! You could keep writing out this table until you get to 34. Or you might have realized that 34 is an even number, so the answer has to be either negative 1 or positive 1. And 34 is not a multiple of 4, so i to the 34th equals negative 1. Try using this kind of reasoning to figure out what i to the 2003 equals. Yes, 2003 is a very large number, but maybe you can cleverly figure out which column of this table i to the 2003 belongs to. Precisely! One way to figure this out is to realize that 2000 is a multiple of 4, so i to the 2000 equals 1. That means i to the 2001 equals i, i to the 2002 equals negative 1, and i to the 2003 equals negative i. Okay, so now that you've got some practice raising i to positive exponents, let's look at i to the negative 1. How can we simplify this expression? Well, you may remember that raising a number to a negative exponent equals 1 divided by that number to the positive exponent. So i to the negative 1 equals 1 over i to the first, or 1 over i. Hmm, 
What now? Well, without changing the value of this expression, we can multiply the numerator and denominator by i. If you multiply these fractions, what simplified expression do you get? Right, so multiplying the numerators, we have 1 times i, or i, and multiplying the denominators, i times i is negative 1. So we have i over negative 1. Dividing by negative 1 is the same as multiplying by negative 1, right? It just makes the number negative. So i to the negative 1 turns out to equal negative i. Crazy, right? Again, here's our table of positive powers of i. And now, let's go in the negative direction. i to the zero, just like any real or imaginary number raised to the zero, equals one. And as you just found, i to the negative one equals negative i. You can work out for yourself that i to the negative two equals negative one, and i to the negative three equals i. And here are the next four negative powers of i, and the next four. So, for negative exponents, a similar pattern has emerged, cycling through 1, negative i, negative 1, and i. Following this pattern, can you figure out what i to the negative 83rd power equals? Excellent! So, there are a few ways to figure this out. You might have recognized that i to the negative 80 equals 1, because negative 80 is a multiple of 4. So then i to the negative 81 equals negative i, i to the negative 82 equals negative 1, and i to the negative 83 equals i. All right, now suppose you're raising an imaginary number like 2i to the third power. What now? Well, remember that you can distribute exponents onto terms being multiplied or divided. So 2 times i, then raised to the third power, equals 2 to the third times i to the third. So can you simplify this expression? Right, so 2 to the third is 8, and i to the third is negative i. So 2i to the third equals 8 times negative i, which we can write more simply as negative 8i. Again, nicely done. 